Hey everybody, I am so very sorry to be so incredibly late. Um, <laughs> the joys of having an actual IRL business in addition to the internet business. So how is everybody? Look, we are live with working technology, also with uh, pretzels in the background, because apparently that's where we are today. So um, welcome, so since we're getting started so late, with the tutorial stream, I think we're probably going to scrub the podcast for this evening. So um, Heather and I will be back playing games and bantering next week. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and treat you to the tutorials that were supposed to be last week, starting with Kumihimo Pendant Cord. So it's actually a really fun tutorial. Um, and... <sighs> I need to breathe when I talk. It's a it's a whole thing. Oh, so why do I feel like I have fewer lights than usual? Because I don't think that's actually true. I think I just it's just been a hot minute since I was since I was doing this. So also hi Turbo, if you can hear me through Lori's headphones. So all right, so Kumihimo pendant cord. So let's just take a a brief stroll through my computer to see if I have a photo of that that I can throw up there. Because um, of course we're in OBS now, which is good because that means that uh, my mouth is actually synced up with the words that I'm saying and that you are hearing, I hope, which is uh, generally ideal for a stream. Um, but I am still, I haven't, I haven't built all the scenes yet. So let's go ahead and see if I have this. Um, in my computer. So, I'm going to go ahead and da -da -da. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Um, I know, darkness. Incredible, probably darkness and silence, actually. That's. Oh, man. I'm used to. That's what I want. <coughs> okay, so the answer to that is I apparently do not have it readily accessible on my computer, but anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's going to be fun. So Kumihimo is Japanese cord braiding, and this is a really fun, really simple technique. So I'm going to show you how to make it into a pendant cord that you can use to showcase cool pendant that you've made yourself or a cool pendant that you have you can just as easily make it into a bracelet um, just by making it shorter also I do need to say that since I think I said this already since we are starting so late we are not going to be doing the button list after this broadcast I'm just going to go ahead and actually devote the time to the project in its entirety and then um, we'll do the button list next week Okay, so let's talk about tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. So you are going to need a Kumihimo disc. Okay, this is the tool that you use to create your Kumihimo braid. And um, since these are this kind of, um, the ones we use are this kind of foamy substance, they do sometimes get a little bit stretched out. So it's often advisable to have one for small cord, one for large cord. However, we are 
running a little low on King Hemo discs, so don't tell Heather that I'm using one that's labeled for silk with <gasps> satin rat tail, even though she has a monitor and she can see it perfectly well. Also, I just outed myself, but anyway, Kumihimo disc, easy to find on any online supplier. You can also make your own mm, out of cardboard. Um, you're going to need satin rat tail cord or the fiber of your choice. Um, for pendant cords, I'm a fan of the satin rat tail because I think it's very pretty and I like the shininess of it. You are going to need four strands of the fiber of your choice, each of which is six times the length that you want your finished cord to be. So, if you are trying to make an 18 inch pendant cord, you need six times 18 inches. So, um, what is that, nine feet times four strings. Okay, so four strings at nine feet long. It's a lot, it is. At some point, I'll find my Kumihimo belt that I tried to make back in the distant misty days of my youth. And it's a giant Gordian knot and is never going to be finished. So they do sell bobbins upon which you can wrap these cords and if you're doing anything that's longer than a 16 or 18 inch pendant cord I highly recommend it because otherwise it just gets to be a huge disaster. In addition to your Kumihimo cord and your um, sorry your Kumihimo disc and your cord you are going to need some see why 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 so dark Hello, keyboard. Nobody needs that right now, but um, we need a little bit of, I mean, the focus is good, so that's great, but, hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and, hey, look at that. Now you can actually see the things. And let's make it a little bit brighter. Well, autofocus obviously don't like that. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. There we go. All right, so here we go. So you're going to need, and yes, one of these things is not like the other. I do see that. So you're gonna need a pair of cones for the end of your kumihima and then in order to assemble everything you are also going to need a little bit not a ton and of course I love my tools over there um, you're gonna need a little bit of 22 or 24 gauge wire ideally in the same can you grab I can get them thank you ideally in the same metal as your cones and then you are going to need your regular complement of wire wrapping tools, which is going to be your round nose, your chain nose, and your cutter. Which wire cutters which I just dropped on the ground because it's been that kind of week thus far. So round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, wire cutters. All right so we're gonna start out with making a weight for the end of our kumihimo and then setting up our kumihimo disc so i'm going to start with my bronze wire again 20 22 or 24 gauge any of these will work well for this project now i'm going to go ahead and just 
a decently long piece of it, six inches or so is good. And then I'm going to take my boards, which since I actually pulled these for class uh, last week, week before last, whenever the computer died, um, they've, they've gotten a bit tangled since then, so I'm going to go ahead and separate them. So you want to um, set them up on your Kumi Humo disc. I'm going to find, I never actually did um, section these off like I should have, but hmm. mm. you know, it's a good thing that, it, it, it's a lucky thing that nothing got thrown today because things, there were some moments. Nobody died, but graves were dug. Huh? Nobody died, but graves were dug. Graves were dug. The dumpster was prepared to receive bodies, but there are no bodies in the dumpster or in any of the graves that I dug at undisclosed locations. I promise there aren't any bodies in those graves. None. None bodies. Mm -mm. Ooh, yay! Hi, Sharon. That's okay. I was incredibly, incredibly late because we had a very darling and somewhat needy couple who came in at like 5.55 and didn't leave until, you know, 10 minutes ago. So, yeah. Uh, so we are, we're bumping the button list for tonight and we're, I'm just going to do the tutorial because we are so incredibly late um, and that way I can actually finish the tutorial out in its entirety and not have to rush to get to the button list um, and um, we'll be back to the button list next week but we will do, we'll be doing a sale tomorrow. Alright, so I've got my two pieces of cord in my one color, I've got two pieces of cord in my second color now. Yes, these all can be the same color and that does make a beautiful cord, does not however, however make for a good demonstration, which is why I'm using two colors. So again, four cords, each of which is six times the finished length of your intended pendant cord uh, length. Sorry, that was redundant. If I had thought about that phrase a little bit more before I said it, it would have come out more gracefully. I'm going to find the center of both of those cords and I'm going to put them on my Kumi Hemo disc. And what I want to do is I want to take the center of the cord and I want to align it over the center of the hole in my disc. And then I'm going to take the pieces of my cord and I'm going to clip them, one on either side of the two dots that are to the east and west of my center hole. Now I'm going to take my other two cords, which I also have not cut in half, so just bear with me for a minute. Um, also, I just want to say, if you are going to an establishment and you are having them do a repair of an item for you on the spot, do not stand there and stare at them while they do it, because guess what? Freaking nerve-wracking. Alright, so now I'm going to take those two cords, and I'm going to also find the center of those. And then I'm going to line the center of those cords also up over the center of the hole in my Kumihimo disc, but I'm going to place this pair of cords perpendicular to my previous cords. So I've got two going north-south, I've got two going east-west. Now if you set them up the way that I have, so you've got a pair of colors going one direction and a pair of colors going the other direction, what you will get is a very pretty kind of spiraling color pattern to your pendant cord. You don't have to do that. Daddy Fat! Hi! How are you? We, we are, we are frazzled today. I'm frazzled. I can't speak for Heather and everyone else, but I'm frazzled today. I frazzled day. Yes. I don't know when I've ever not been I've known you when you've not been frazzled. I mean, it was a number of years ago, but it did happen. <laughs> I saw it at least once. Yay, your boys get home tonight. Toddy Fat, where are they? Are they at camp or are they elsewhere? 
Um, okay, so if you do it like this, pair pair, you get a spiraling color pattern, but you can do it, you could do four different colors, and then you just get a really cool kind of textural pattern. You can do one color. Um, it, you know, the possibilities are not endless because you only have eight strings, but you have a lot of combinations available to you in this eight string pattern. So now I'm going to take my, ah, Maryland, cool, or not, cooler than Arizona, I would imagine, though I've repeatedly been informed that Maryland is part of the South, not the North. So that was that was from a Marylander, Marylandy. Marylander. Marylander. What's the, what's the word? I don't know. Mm. That makes two of us. Oh, Lori, don't say that to Heather. She's gonna run away. I am gonna run away. I'm gonna call her tomorrow and be like. Are you okay? You're not at work. And she's going to be like, I'm in Canada. Bye. I'll probably have to say I'm partway to Canada, but... Yeah. I don't know. If you don't take your sleeping meds, you could probably drive all night. I could, but that would still only get me partway to Canada. Uh, that's fair. You could stop and visit my dad in Wisconsin. Hey, I like it. There you go. I think my grandmother's house is currently untenanted, so you could even have a whole house. Nice. Yeah, there might not be electricity there, so that might be a problem, but... Well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our piece of um, wire that I cut a minute ago, which was about six inches or so, um, at least six hours from the U.S. border, so it's about 22 hours to Milwaukee, and then probably another to get to the border and then I, which now I'm going to just prove my ignorance um, which part of the border Lori sorry are we talking like Wisconsin, Minnesota New York I could pull up a map but you're right here so I might as well ask you because um, as my Canadian Montana, oh well, uh, uh, yeah, okay, Heather, you're going to be driving for a hot minute. Or a cool minute, but you got to go diagonal across the whole country. So, yeah. Okay. You would still be, you, you, mm, yeah, that's a lot of driving. Um, now, my, my um, Mandy Head, who's on the stream occasionally, she's from uh, Thunder Bay. Which is, I think, bless you, bless you, more straight up from Wisconsin. No more blessings. I'm out of blessings, well, Heather. I'm sorry. I curse you. Well, okay. I, 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 mean, curse, I curse you kindly. I earned it. I earned it. I curse you kindly. Well, thank you. Um, I, I... Curse me gently with you. I curse you gently with uh, a Mayflower and turkey. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, you know. You would have hit me had I not moved. Yeah, of course get... I would stop in Kentucky. Hey, Pam. Hi, Pam. <laughs> I actually, before I bought Beating Dreams, so, okay, so for anybody who's just joining us, we are incredibly late tonight because we had some very kind and also somewhat um, stoned customers who were making bracelets fairly late, and so we're just kind of combining the button list with the tutorial, I think is where we're at at the moment, though Heather's only on audio because I don't know that she did her, did her, I don't know that she put her face on. Well, no, because you canceled button list before. Right, so, yeah. so we've got audio Heather and audio visual me, and we're chit-chatting and doing a project. So it's kind of like a combined project slash button list, though I'm going to have to go get some more caffeine in a minute, or it's going to be a combined um, stream and Allison falls asleep. Nap time. So... Uh, that's gonna happen in a minute, but yeah, I uh, I thought about moving to Kentucky. Um, so back in the day when my mother was starting to think about retirement, and I was still unaware how insane my mother is, we were talking about buying some sort of 
retail establishment and we were talking about where to go because I was in Texas and my mom didn't want to come to Texas and my mom was in Wisconsin and I flat out refused to go back to Wisconsin. I'm like, no, nope, not happening. Never, ever, ever, never shall I ever go back to Wisconsin unless somebody is dying. Uh, so we decided, you know, maybe somewhere in the middle would be smart like Kentucky, which apparently has delightful weather. And then we wound up in Texas anyway. So, ooh, pastrami, meatballs, yum. Okay, so I'm just gonna let y'all talk about bobcats for a second. I'm gonna go get some more caffeine and then we're gonna do this some humor thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I made a uh, roasted plum ice cream y'all and according to Heather it was good hi Keiko and yeah I would imagine there's got to be some kind of licensing for that is she like a wildlife rehabber or just a lover of the wildlife Maybe she just doesn't mess with them. Yeah, that's fair. Or possibly she doesn't have any, like, you know, smaller prey type pets. Anyway. Okay, so, Kumihimo. Got my disc set up. Got my wire. I've bent it in half to make kind of a hairpin type thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hairpin and I'm going to put it so that it goes down on the diagonal so I'm basically catching um, opposite corners of this little square that I've made and I know I've done it right because when I pull on it it should pull um, them into kind of a little bow sort of shape now I need a weight so I happened to grab last week before the computer broke a spindle whirl which is a thin object that's designed as a weight for fiber craft so I figured it would be perfect for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire and I'm just going to attach my spindle whirl to my wire and it is not going to be pretty. No it's not. It's going to be pretty dang ugly. Now they do sell purpose built kumihimo weights. I don't have any of those. Um, I've also made uh, custom fancy kumihimo weights. Also don't have any of those. They're here somewhere. They're here somewhere but for the moment okay that, that mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so what I've done now is I've attached my spindle whirl to my wire. I'm gonna need this wire for something else, so I want to um, I want to not bend it up too much. And wait, wait, I didn't, I didn't see Keiko's response. Okay, so now we start weaving. And this is where once I get past this, then we can really start chit-chatting because it's going to be a lot of repetition until I've got this done. And hello, click, thank you. Okay, so, ah, too much zoom. Oh, they live in Huntsville and raise them from babies. All the zoom, got it. But too much zoom. Not the, like, talking type, but the... Um, the, this type. So, hold on. Because that, let's, let's go ahead and just, there we go. Okay, better. 
All right, so what I have is I've got my Kumahimo disc. I've got two on top, two on the bottom. You start with the ones that are on the bottom. All right, and I'm holding this so that it's suspended over my work surface so that my weight can do its job and actually pull on the cords and make tension because if you're setting your weight on your work surface, it's not doing really anything. So now your pattern is going to be, and once again, we're starting with the ones that are underneath. You're going to go top, right, and I actually should flip this around so that it looks more like that to you guys. Okay, so because of the way my cameras are. Okay, so whichever way you're starting, once again, you want to start with the ones that are underneath. You're going to go top, right. So as you're holding your disc, as you're looking at it, you want the top right cord. You're going to take it and you're going to move it to the bottom right notch. And then you're going to take the bottom left cord and you're going to move it to the top left notch. And sorry, I'm still getting used to OBS and their weird proportions. So. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. I promise that this is the start of things getting better uh, with this whole everything, but it's going to take a hot minute for me to adjust, so I apologize. Let's just steam out a little bit more. Alright, that is apparently um, as far as that will go out. So after I have done top right to bottom left, sorry, top right to bottom right, top left to bottom, or so, oh Jesus, crammy. let's try that again from the top, top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate my disc a quarter of a turn, now it doesn't matter if you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, as long as you rotate the same way every time, so now we're going to go top right, to bottom right, bottom left, top left, and rotate. So we're rotating a quarter of a turn each time. So top right, to bottom right, bottom left, to top left, rotate. Top right, I'm doing this backwards, sorry, <laughs> to bottom right. Now, we're going to talk for a second about this. Heather, what's this called? Bird foot! Bird foot! Ink. This is, okay, so if you have to stop at any point in time, for any amount of time, meaning if you have to use the restroom, if you get if a phone call, to sneeze. if you have to sneeze, if you have to pack up all of your bead stuff and move across the country, doesn't matter. This is where you stop, because this is the only place in the entire pattern where there is no question about what comes next. Okay? So anytime you stop, you stop at a bird foot. Right? So, yes. hey stream, if you have to stop, where do you stop? Bird foot. I was asking the stream. I'm just answering. Okay. I'm excited about bird feet. All right. That's fair. Bird foot. Yay, Kiko. All right. So, At this point, I know that it's, yay, Sharon, bottom left to top left, and then rotate. And at this point, I'm going to stop doing this upside down because it is driving me crazy. So now we're going to go ahead and show you this in real time. So top right down, bottom left up, and I'm slow compared to Heather. Heather is way faster than me. She's like a speed demon at this. I am not as speedy or demony as Heather is. Okay, so at some point I'm going to need to move this off camera because at some point it's going to get to the point where I cannot hold my weight above my work surface 
and still have it visible on the camera. But yes, so this is more like typical working speed for Kumihimo. Just top down, bottom up, rotate, and here we go. So we're just going to keep on going. So I'm going to stop for a second at a bird foot, mind you, and show you what I've got going. So you should be starting to see this kind of braided piece that's coming through your disc and that's that spiral pattern that I was showing you about. See how it kind of looks like stri stripes at this point of each color. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, continue. So yes, I'm neither as speedy nor as demony as Heather is, it's true. She knows much more about speed and demons than me. Explains my dating history. <laughs> it's, how do we explain my dating history? The road to hell is paved with good intentions? <laughs> kind of feel that that describes my dating history. <laughs> Yours are just slower demons. <laughs> um, Birdfoot. I believe it is Keiko. Yeah. I never made those when I was a kid, but I believe that it is the same. Bye, Caro. Um, which is interesting because this is actually, and I have a couple of old Kumihimo pieces to bring into you, Heather, for you to look at. Okay. But this has been used for, um, in Japanese culture for a really freaking long time. Do you know like how old it actually is? Uh, samurai era. Which is what, the 1700s? Um, 1500s? Well, it, it Bronze lasted age. a while. Let's see. I mean, theoretically, Keiko, if you had a material that was um, stiff enough, like those stupid plastic laces, you could do this without a disc. Wow, late 12th century. Ooh, wow. To 18th century. Nineteenth century. Ah, there we go. Um, so yes, it's been around for quite a while and yes. and now it's, you know, something kids do at summer camp. But um but yeah, if you have something that's sturdy enough. I, I think you could do it without the disc. It's just that if you don't have something that has its own body and structure, like the you know the rat tail doesn't, then you I think you need the disc to in in order to form the pattern. And it's interesting. A lot of um, once again, see, I stopped to talk bird foot. Uh, a lot of. Uh, do I would recommend stopping a lot just to practice stopping at a bird foot before you get too into it. Sorry. And a lot of your traditional kumihimo actually is made with bundles of silk fibers. Um, and then if you're really going to get into it, like if you are just going to go down the kumihimo rabbit hole, there is actually a, um, a tool called a marudai, which is essentially one of these but on a stand. And that's what all of the, you know, like real OG Kumihimo words use to weave super complicated things. Um, but for those of us who are Kumihimo novices um, and are only looking for a simple eight strand braid, these discs are great and much easier to travel with than a Mardai. Oh goodness. Oh dear. Oh Stanley. Oh cats. These mm. things happen. Gravity. Cats and gravity have a, have a complicated relationship they actually. Do. They really do because sometimes they seem to be immune and sometimes they seem to be like gravity attractors. So how does that work? So you're saying cats are magic? 
Pretty much. I mean, they think they're magic. That's fair. Okay, so here we go. I'm my braid is continuing to um, progress. Okay, I do want to show y'all one thing. So, if you forgot to stop at a bird foot, whoopsie. Um, here is one way you can help yourself um, tell what is your next step. The one um, that's a V is the is the one you have to do next. Now, of course, you got two of those, so you're gonna have to pick one. Um, but does it actually matter, Heather? Since it is a symmetrical weave, does it matter if you pick the wrong one? It does. Okay. Um. Because it is a symmetrical weave, but it also has a direction to it. Okay, so try not to pick the wrong one. But it'll be pretty obvious if you do. But that at least gives you, you know, you've got two options down from four. So the ones that are the V are the ones that need to get woven the next. Or braided, technically. Technically it's a braid, not a weave. I think. Pickles, gosh, I don't know these pickles. But I really, at this point, just want to like sleep in my own house and. Uh, anyway, that's a whole rabbit hole I'm not going down tonight, but pickles! Love making pickles! Miss making pickles. Made, like I said, made roasted plum ice cream, which Heather was firmly endorsing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have not heard anything else from the other people to whom I gifted the ice cream, so they might have died of, of amazement or they might have hated it. Not sure. If they didn't die of amazement, then I'm taking it back from them. And yeah, and I, I miss making ice cream. It's been a minute. Like, uh, So I had uh, Mary the Librarian who is not on stream tonight. I have a feeling I know what she's doing, but I don't remember. Um, but there, she works at a community college here in Dallas, and they have a food pantry there, and apparently the food pantry on Friday was uh, begging people to take plums because they had a bunch of plums that were not going to make it through the weekend. And so Mary took the plums, and she messaged me, and she's like, I've made everything that I can think of out of these plums. Do you want any? I was like, sure. I can make something from the plums, and then I'm like, do I want to make cobbler, or do I want to make ice cream? And at that point, it was about 85 degrees in my house, so three guesses why I picked ice cream. Aside from, of course, the fact that ice cream is amazing. Um, so, I will say that making roasted plum ice cream probably negates a little bit of that pseudo logic, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, but apparently it turned out well, is, is the upshot of that. And I should also make more homemade ice cream, because that stout ice cream with toffee chips is really good. And you can turn all kinds of things into ice cream, as anyone who's ever watched Iron Chef will attest to. Though, okay, so in, in terms of questionable product names, apparently the Ninja Company, uh, the ones who make the Ninja Bullet Blender and uh, other Ninja products, um, have an ice cream maker called a Ninja Creamy. Which is better, I guess, than a ninja cream pie, but only slightly. Uh, weigh in on on your thoughts, stream, because I'm interested to hear. Hmm. I don't know that it is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, we've created an OnlyFans. Yeah, but we don't. Wait, wait, we did. It's it's it was an accident, but here it, we are. Okay. It, is it about making ice cream? It's about 
making some cream. <laughs> Hair. I'm glad I'm not on screen. <laughs> I'm hiding now. Because she could do that to me. I, I was going to say, I could unhide you. I could, I mean, I could grab a camera and just chase you down. Oh my. I mean, I'm broken, but you're more broken. It is too hot to chase anyone down right now. Uh, it depends on the motivation. Okay, fair. I see. Okay, so I'm just... Uh, chatting about questionable product names and braiding and so that's where I am um, so I'm going for a pendant cord we're gonna see um, I'm gonna see where I'm at at 730 it might wind up being a bracelet the only difference between a bracelet and a pendant cord obviously is the length but um, until then we're gonna talk about ice cream and questionable product names so yeah ninja creamy I'm gonna go with Whoever figured that name out probably got paid way more than me and also um, somebody had some questionable consultants on that project. Also somebody is laughing their ass off all the way to the bank or mm -hmm. has because I don't think it's a new project or product. Um, let's see. Um, so this kind of opens up the discussion to other uh, questionable product names. So there we go. Who color? Okay, so I'm assuming that was a Winnie the Pooh tie-in, uh, and so it was some sort of yellow, or was it actually brown? Because it was actually brown. That's mm. so. I guess then it would be P O O, not P O O H. Okay. So chime in, people. What are some other questionable products, product names that you have come across? Um, things that it's like, oh, you really, you really should have Googled that first. Um, though I do have, bird foot, I do have one, um, it's not a questionable product name, but it's a, it's signage that it's not unfortunate like it's not offensive but it, it is funny okay also by the way tater tot if you don't know about tater tot you should oh definitely because him's eat adorbs he's got bonkers he's got bonkers he's got bonkers on his back legs now that though he might have taken gotten them taken off he might just have straight leggies what I, it's a thing that happens if the bonkers work. If the bonkers work. And let's see. This was giving me um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind vibes. Um, but where's the thing? Also, I took my glasses off, so now I can't see anything. Okay, I can see my phone, but I can't see y'all. <sighs> Ugh. Well, of course, Keiko, because I asked. Oh, I would like you to also share, and then I'll try and find the thing I was actually going to share, but I would like to share that uh, my boyfriend left a towel hanging over the edge of the uh, tub, and so Elton has claimed it as his spot. So first there was the the Elton bathing and having a spa day and then there was the post spa day nap and I can now never ever use my shower ever again because it's, it's it is spa. all for Elton and his spa days so um it's gonna become a really good thing that you, you that we don't have smell vision and Heather I'm sorry yes does Tiny Tim which is Bonkers under back legs. Tater tot. Tater tot, not Tiny Tim. Yes. Tater tot with the bonkers. Also, if anyone has any advice on how to grow this plant, I would appreciate it. Because I am confused. Because it doesn't like to be watered. Ah, 
Ah, there we go. Okay, so, so, the, okay, Heather. Yeah. What do you think about this advice on how to handle a fear? <laughs> I, I mean, because you're a beer drinker, I'm not, I, so I, I just want to make sure. I don't usually let mine get that dusty. Okay, that's to. fair. <laughs> so, so yeah, just, just in case, um, you know, not that far from either of our houses, if you want to, you can wash and dry, focus, you can wash and dry your beer. There we go. So, you know, just in case you need a clean beer, I can tell you where to go get a clean beer. And I apparently grow, no, I don't, I can't, okay, seriously, catnip and mint, which are both practically weeds, and I can't grow either one of them, and it's really annoying. Though I will say that, you know, I, I am privileged to have a washer and dryer in my flat, but I will say the idea of a laundromat bar is definitely appealing. I don't know if they have those here in Texas, but I feel like they have them other places. Am I wrong about that? Of course, here in Texas, they're not laundromats, they're washetariats. Yes. Which is, which is funny. Yeah. Because they, well, I mean, just because both of them have the same origin just with different words that mean the same thing. That might have not have been the best way to say that, but hopefully some people figured out what I meant. I did a bit. I did. I'm, well, I'm just good. good. I speak you very speak, fluent. You speak fluent me. Yes. So here we are. So we are proceeding to bracelet length. <laughs> there you go. Right? That is something that, I mean, and I'm, I don't, I do not think I am ADHD. I, you know, have never had that diagnosis. I respect, you know, the diagnosis for the folks who deserve it. But I, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm ADHD. I could be wrong. I could be partly. I could be, you know, I could have sprinkling. But, ee! Yay, Pam! But, um, I find it weird. Like, I, I find it difficult to sit and just sit. Like, I will usually, you know, if I'm sitting waiting for something, I'll grab my phone. Um, or if I have a project or something, I'll work on that. But my mom, she'll just sit. Sit and stare at nothing. I find that strange. Is that is that just me? Am I being judgy for my towards my mom? I'm actually asking. Uh, you are asking. You're being judgy. I am. You are. <laughs> So you're saying I am being untowardedly judging of my mom? No. Are you? Ah. That's true. Anxiety and ADD have similar characteristics. All characteristics. Characteristics. I can speak English. Also, exhaustion. And exhaustion plus anxiety with maybe a sprinkling of neurospiciness is, uh, you know, that's just a perfect storm of what the fuck. And my, my shoelace is caught on a zip tie uh, that is caught on a power cord. Speaking of things not to do. 
Jeez, Sesta. What's me? No, who don't know? Who on the phone? Uh, no one that we need to worry about. That's good. Yeah. So pretty, I love this color. You're a, you are not wrong, Kiko. Neurospicy symptoms do overlap a lot, and sometimes it's not sometimes, but <laughs> most of the time, trying to you know, trying to figure out what the heck is it is is a great problem. Uh, so, I will say, as far as Kumihimo goes, this is very repetitive, which means that some of y'all are going to love it, and some of y'all are going to be like, oh, hell the fuck, no. Um, you know, it's, it's the same type of thing as knitting and crochet, where as long as you're doing a simple version of it, okay? I'm not talking, y'all, about like a, you know, 24 strand braid, okay? I'm talking about a simple eight strand braid, bird foot. Um, as long as you're doing a simple version of it, it's just a repetitive motion that creates a pattern. It's like knitting, it's like crochet. If you're just doing the basics, it's fairly simple. It's easy to repeat and it, it can be meditative for some people because it allows your brain to kind of check out because you're just doing this same thing over and over. And once again, some people, to some people that is like bliss. That is the ultimate meditation. Um, I'm a fan of this type of meditation rather than, you know, other types of meditation because uh, coming from a practical Midwestern background, you know, sitting around and doing nothing was frowned upon. I, you know, in my grown up life, I realized that sitting around and addressing your mental health needs is not doing nothing. But there's still that thing in my head that's like, you're just sitting around doing nothing. So doing something that is meditative and productive is something that resonates with me. That doesn't mean it's going to resonate with you. Doesn't mean it's going to resonate with anybody besides me. But that's that's where I that's where I live on this particular issue. Um, but some people find this type of thing just maddening, just doing the same thing over and over and over. So you know, it's really all about what floats your boat. By the way. We got to see an in-person Sharon Hammer today. Very exciting. Love her. We always love when we get to see our peoples in person. Like, I, I think I will never, not never, but it, it's going to take a long time for me to get past that. See, there's my sparrow. You can see it really nicely now. It's going to take me a long time to get past that pandemic place of being incredibly happy to see people in person just because we didn't get to for so long and um you know i i appreciate all of our people so much more i appreciate all of our distance people but i also appreciate okay i promise i'm not trying to like strip for you this shirt is just having things it's having thoughts today about possibly i should be on only fans um but I, I, as an introvert, never been super people-y, but I will say that the pandemic has given me a greater appreciation of face-to-face -face interactions than I had before, so if anyone's going to, you know, start making lists of silver linings of this, you know, just gigantic, overarching cloud, that for me is one of them is I have I have gained a greater appreciation of in-person interactions though there are some people who, who are still annoying as fuck none of you but they're out there 
Not Heather either. But other people Okay, so let's see, we've moved on from questionable product names. Let's see, so speaking of things that, I'm just gonna chat and, and weave this thing. So if I'm boring y'all and you're like, please skip to the end, just pop up a comment and be like, please skip to the end, I'm sick of talking to you, word foot, again. Um, so Keiko, so if you, keep, if you do them like I set them up, which is two and two, then you get this spiral where you can very definitely see their separate paths. If you mix them, what you what you get is just kind of a, a more mixed sort of woven look where you don't have this defined spiral pattern. You still have obviously both the colors or more than two colors because you can do that with four colors as well, but the pattern isn't as defined. It's just, um, my brain just kind of reads it as a texture of all of the colors. Um, but anyway, yeah, if y'all want me to stop talking and just get through the project, let me know. But since we've, uh, like I said, bounced the button list for tonight, I'm going to just, you know, keep chit-chatting with y'all as I do this project. Um, let's see. Also, I'm going to take a minute for some sh shameless self-promotion. So I do have, I, I'm doing it, y'all. I, I may have talked uh, on streams in the past of my friends who do a lovely um, 15th to 16th century reenactment event in Belleville, Texas at this crazy, literally this dude in Belleville. This dude is not my friend, but this dude rents his property out for events. He built himself a castle. It's a mini castle. You know, it's like a four bedroom castle, but turrets and drawbridge, moat and everything in Belleville, Texas, kid you not, uh, they do tours. They also run it out for events. And so my dear friends, Tim and Idy, um, who are huge into reenactment, do a lovely um, 15th and 16th, eventually, bleh, 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 15th to 17th century event, I would say. Uh, okay, got it, Keiko. Uh, and they've been doing it for a number of years, and it started out as a period fencing tournament. And uh, a couple of years ago, Tim's wife, Ivy, said, I'm sick of watching all of you boys play with your swords all day long, and there's nothing for the rest of us who don't fence to do. So she started what she calls the Material Culture Track, which is amazing. So she brings in lecturers from all over the country to lecture on, on period appropriate topics like cosmetics in the 16th century and, um, you know, how to make finger loop cord braiding, how to make, you know, period corded buttons, how to make aglets. That class was really freaking fun. Um, from sheet metal, you know, and all of these amazing things. So while the, you know, the, and it's not just the boys, I shouldn't say the boys. While the martial track people, who are of both genders, are doing their thing, then, you know, the rest of us who are not swordy people can be doing other things. So, I was um, privileged enough to vend at the event last year. They invited me. Um, and this year I'm lecturing, and I'm so excited. So, I'm doing my Pearl lecture, which I know I've talked about. So, I might uh, be testing parts of it on you all. Um, and it's in November, so it's pretty soon. So I might be forcing you all to listen to lectures on the um, magic, mystery, and history of pearls. Because um, they are a gemstone that, first of all, they're the world's oldest gems. They're considered the world's oldest gems. Um, they were originally found by people, and nobody even knows how long ago, but people foraging for food at the seaside um, found pearls and then, you know, said, hey, these are pretty in whatever language they were speaking at the time and, you know, there you go. But there's a, there's just so much cool stuff and there's some really wackadoo stories as well. So I'm very much looking forward to it. But yes, 
I definitely might force y'all to listen to some of that. Okay, so we're getting close to pendant length, but I am going to go ahead and seize, I think, in a minute. And Keiko asked about my pendant. So this is bronze metal clay, uh, but what this actually is, um, is it's a... Right? It's I'm it's probably gonna be elegant dress, Sharon. Um, but I I I still I have a treasure treasure chest, so I'm thinking of bringing it. Uh so and it's gonna be a a two component um <laughs> it's gonna be a two component class. So the uh the lecture is going to be mostly you know, focusing on uh, history and metaphysical properties of pearls and some of the truly wacky stories that exist because uh, there are some and then uh, there's going to be a second component to the class um, which is after which is an actual pearl knotting tutorial hands on um, so this Keiko alright so one of my favorite metal clay techniques is carving what this actually is is me um, taking a, a, a basically a silicone block like a like a lino block um, or an eraser um, this actually interestingly enough happened to be the, the back of a silicone mold that I was like hey I've got this thing handy let's do that um, and taking a gouge and carving this the back of the silicone mold to create a stamp and then putting the bronze clay on the stamp so this is actually the reverse of um, a Fibonacci carved uh, silicone mold. Anyway, that was probably a little bit more involved than it needed to be, but thank you Sharon for volunteering your treasure chest. Treasure chest? I am, um, mine's orange. Though I do have some gold lee. I feel like a treasure chest should have some gold on it. You're not wrong about that. Um, because, yeah, everybody, uh, everyone in the lecture is going to get a kit for a knotted bracelet. Um, so it would be fun to pull those out of a treasure chest. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with this until I get a decent length. Now, when you're doing this, and I love to do this, Keiko, with, with the metal clay, is to just... It's harder than you might think, but to just basically take a blob and either smoosh it onto something or roll it out and smoosh it onto something. And yes, I just said smoosh twice in a professional tutorial. Get over it. Um, that's <laughs> that's how I roll. Um, but I love the irregular edges. Also, y'all, I just got a new set of wax seals. They're all dragons. Carol's gonna be so excited. But I'm definitely going to be making some bronze clay dragons. Wax seal for chicken. It's going to be fun. So when you're doing something like this, you do need to remember a couple of things. So just, I'm going to take a sec and say a couple of things you need to think about. Smoosh is a totally professional term. Also mash. Your end. Okay, I'm a huge fan of this particular end. We do usually have this in our findings trunk show. But if you're going to make this a pendant cord that you're going to put things on and off of, you need to make sure that whatever you're trying to put on and off of it has a big enough ring that it'll go over the fat part of this. And if it won't, you need to find one of these that's narrower. Secondly, this is going to add length. Your clasp is going to add length. Your wire is going to add length. I don't even have a clasp. I'm going to have to go grab one of those. Also, again, wires, not my wire, my shirt is trying to escape. But, um, you, so you need to remember if there's a particular length that you are trying to achieve, that all of those end bits are going to add to it. So you, you want to not make more work for yourself and weave too much. For instance, if I was trying to make an 18 inch pendant cord, assuming that I'm using a regular size toggle or hook, which I will go grab in a bit, plus my caps, I would say I would only, for, for an 18 inch pendant cord, I would only weave about 16 and a half to 16 and three quarter inches of Kumihimo because 
though all of that adds and you know why make more work for yourself so we're going to continue on this is where we're at right now again i ended on a bird foot so i know exactly where to start again and there we go um something else about the bird foot that is helpful is you always you're always going to be taking a cord that's under and bringing it over so for instance this is my bird foot so if i'm sitting here and i'm like oh crumb fiddle sticks and you know pish tosh i can't remember which side of my bird foot i i have to bring up okay so if i bring this side up i'm basically just undoing my bird foot and that's not the goal if i take this side that's coming from underneath I am moving my kumihimo braid forward. I'm progressing it on. So that's another um, thing to think about is it's always the, the ones that are underneath. So so you've got the, the parallel versus the V to tell you which ones are next, but also it's you know the over and the under. Like you always want to start with the ones that are underneath. And on, on these, there's two that are underneath, see, both underneath, whereas on here there's only one. So if you're trying to progress your kumihimo forward, again, going oh, rats and sinking ships. Let's try that again. Nope, 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 ah! Son of a beach. Okay. Yes, 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 okay. Excuse my weird cursing, but... I think I got it back. <laughs> um, but so that is, that's something that can help you if you get into a point where you're like, well, I done screwed this up real good. So how do I figure out how to fix it? Um, the other thing that I would say about if you screwed something up and you don't know what is just start going backwards. Okay, start going backwards until you get to a point where you recognize where you are and then start going forwards again. Um, and that can be frustrating because going backwards is frustrating for a lot of people, myself included. But if, if you've gotten to the point where you're like, I, this is, I, what is going on? Um, I think, oh, rats and sinking ships should be on the button list. Does anyone else agree with me? Heather agrees. Corvus is not here, but I will add that to the button list on Discord when I'm done with this broadcast, because oh rats and sinking ships. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, and this is, oh God, this is true for, I'm about to get philosophical, y'all, but it's true for so many things. <laughs> Oh, that'd be amazing, Keiko. Thank you. Because I can't really add it while st still kumihimoing. Huh? Heather already did it. Like I said, she's both speedy and demonic. In the speedy, demon y way. Um, but anyway, uh, it's God, it's true of so many things. If you find yourself lost, go back until you know where you are. <laughs> yes. This is who I am. This is who I'll stay. There we go. Okay, so The Witcher, new season, who's seen it? I have thoughts. I'm not going to spoiler anything. And also good omens. Hi, Supergirl. There's a Supergirl header. Um, but I will say, like, okay, non-spoilery thoughts about good omens is there are two characters who look very similar but are not the same. Hi, Super. 
<laughs> and it's a little confusing if you're not paying close attention. And in the third season of The Witcher, there are two characters whose names are very similar. And it's confusing if you're not paying close attention. So, there we go. That, that's, those are, those are my non-spoilery thoughts on Good Omens and, um, The Witcher. Also, I will say that, like, in my opinion, oh, Keiko, okay, message me. We'll, we'll fix that. I will also say, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, this is, you know, no one's opinion but mine, but I really feel like the most recent Indiana Jones film, the second season of Good Omens, and the third season of The Witcher were all just setups for another go-round. I feel like the Indiana Jones film was a setup for a spin-off, and the uh, Witcher and Good Omens were just setups for the next season. But anyway, no one's hiring me to be a film or television critic. That is my opinion. And I really hope that I didn't spoiler anything for any of you because that was definitely not my intention. Okay, so we are proceeding apace. I said I was going to see where I was at 7.30, but then I just kept talking. So now I think I'm just going to keep going for a minute. But so there we go. So again, uh, Heather's faster at this than I am. Also, you know, when I'm chit-chatting and looking at comments, I'm not as fast as I could be. I'm not slow either. But um, so as far as, hey Heather. How long does it take you to make a 16 inch penny cord? Oh, start to finish, half an hour or something. Okay, so, so on a scale of beginner to Heather, um, beginner is going to be like, it's going to take you probably 90 minutes to two hours to do this project the first time. Um, once you get to um, Heather level, then you're looking at you know, 30 to 45 minutes. I'm a little bit, once again, I'm chit-chatting, but I'm, I'm more in like the one hour range. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Keiko, like, ah, wrong chord. I mean, Harrison Ford's going to be 90, so he is... I am, sh I would bet anyone money that he's not making another Indiana Jones film, and he doesn't, you can tell in this one, and again, if I'm spoiling, like, just, I'm so sorry, ah, but you can tell in this one that he's, he's old, he's in his late 80s, so I'm, you know, he's not gonna do another one, so... You know, they're he's trying to... Okay, well... But still, he's over 80. He's over 80, and he's been in action films for the majority of his career, so trust me, he and... He and my... His knees and my knees, they're like, you know... Um, but... Okay, but if, if you figure... So, okay, so is he, he's in his early 80s, but... If you figure the amount of time it's going to take to produce a film, like if he were going to do another one, he'd be close to 90. And it, that ain't going to happen, which is why I think they're trying to spin it off with a younger actor. Um, but, I mean, you, you can tell. He doesn't move as fast as he used to. And, like, I'm sorry, I'm not even 81, and my knees are like, F you, every day when I'm doing things like walking not you know climbing walls and doing chase scenes and I think he still does most of his own stunts and like mm. like 
I mean, granted, I'm sure that Harrison Ford has more money for orthopedic care than I do, but still, like, at some point, it's like, mm, just, you've, you've abused your body to the point where it's like, screw you and the horse you rode in on, except you don't even get a horse, you just get these busted ass knees and ankles and, and hips. Coconuts. <laughs> and two coconuts, exactly. Oh no, there was a, okay, no, Young Indy was, Young Indy was when I was young. Young Indy was, uh, there may be a new Young Indy series, but they, there was a Young Indy series in like, yeah, you're right, Lori, in like Last Crusade era because they had the, um, e -e. Keiko says your one-liners are on point. <laughs> Um, but there was a young indie series, um, cause, um, remember in Last Crusade, there was the, the actor who played him when he was young, and I, f I feel like maybe it was the same actor, or maybe it was just an actor who looked like the actor in the movie, but no, there was a young indie series when I was young, so they may be doing another one, but they may just be kind of reviving the old material being like, hey, we already paid for this. Let's make some more money off of it. But yeah, the young Indiana Jones adventure adventures was a thing when I was young. Because, you know, I mean, I, regular Indiana Jones was, and, okay, Harrison Ford was a heartthrob of my generation, okay? Even though I was, like, you know, too young. But still. Han Solo, Indiana Jones, like, mm -mm. You, you, you could not have stopped me from flinging myself in a headstrong and supremely awkward fashion at either one of them. No, I've not seen Shrinking. I don't have Apple TV. It's like one of the few streaming services I don't have. But I will have to look it up now. Okay, so here we go. See? You can like, you can... Okay, I will say... Possibly a controversial opinion. opinion. I think Bruce Willis has aged better than Harrison Ford. Also, I did not stop at a bird foot, so we'll see how this goes. I also think Harrison Ford might be older than Bruce Willis. But Bruce has aged really well, or he's had some really good work done, or possibly a combination of both. And yes, I am totally just talking about movie star men like everyone talks about movie star women. Which is actually the, the other one thing I will say about The Witcher season 3 is Anya Shalatra who plays Yennefer who is beautiful had a nose job, lost a ton of weight, not a fan. She's so beautiful, but she was beautiful before. That's just me. So I did see, and it was from one of, it was from a boutique company, so it was out of my budget, but there is a, there's actually a Die Hard Advent calendar that has a little, like, Alan Rickman on Nakatomi Plaza and like they're like ka chink ka chink ka chink ka chink for like all the days from the first of December to Christmas so you can like chink Hans Hans Gruber down like a day um to count down to Christmas which I you know if it had been less than you know sixty dollars I probably would have bought it just because I do love me some Die Hard, and I am of the camp that 
Die Hard is a Christmas movie and anyone can disagree with me and that's fine. I will not, my mind will not be changed. Okay, so Bruce Willis is, a, he's 13 years younger than Ford. Okay, well, that explains why he looks better, but... Um, but Willis has been pretty open, um, which is pretty cool about his, um, okay, what's Bruce Willis's issue? Is it dysphoria? Um, no, aphasia. Aphasia, okay, thank you. Not, uh, sinus, dang it, okay. Synesthesia was actually what I was thinking of when um. I said dysphoria. But aphasia is the actual thing, so... It's like ginkgo biloba. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apparently I've got just mental illness word salad. But it's very cool that he's being open about his aphasia, and that's why he's no longer acting. I mean, also he has the privilege to do so, which is what makes it great, because obviously Bruce Willis doesn't need any more money. As, I mean, not that I have a, you know... Not that I'm a forensic accountant, but I'm guessing Bruce Willis doesn't need any more money. So he can afford to be open about it. But it's nice for those who don't have that privilege that it, there's some vis... Vis... Visibility in the public eye. I, um... God. I just need to try and slow my brain down to match the speed of my mouth. Um, but yeah, so so kudos to him for being an advocate and being honest and open about his struggles because, once again, a lot of people don't have the privilege to do that for multitudes of reasons. And I'm just going to climb up on a teeny soapbox just for a second. This is how change happens is... People with privilege come forward and advocate, and then things change. That, I realize, is a gross oversimplification, but that's how it works. Yeah, seriously. Alright, so now it's down. That's the wrong string. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock. So, let me bird foot and see how much I've done. So yeah, advocacy is important. Advocacy by people with privilege is even more important. Allison finding a ruler is not happening. Ah! That one. Okay, so what do we have? inches. We'd like to have at least 14, so I'm going to try and uh, kick up the speed here. But even even that, like, and then of course you're dealing with the media machine, and and you know, people not necessarily reporting accurately. But whatever's happening to Bruce Willis, I applaud him for doing it, mostly in public, or at least partly in public, because that does make it easier for other people who are less privileged to also um, it helps people who are not as public, not as privileged with their struggles with the same types of things. Um, and I'm not, I'm definitely not an authority on Willis
Oh, right. Yes, that. Um. Yeah. But it, it, okay. There's a there's a deposit envelope behind you, and whatever is the difference between it. Okay, I screwed up. But I took it from the envelope behind you, so that might help you figure it out. Do you, do you want to come Kumihima while I figure it out? No. Okay, Doki. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble, y'all. Oops. Okay, so there's my spiral. All right, and you can see. Ah, see, you can figure anything out if you have all the information. Um, so, ooh, uh, so just for reference, you know, first of all, Allison obviously did not do a great job of centering quartz because he, me, hmm? so this is going to be a short necklace. That's totally fine. But also just, you know, nine feet times four of cord. And here we are at you know 12 inches and we're running short so when you're doing kumihimo or any kind of braiding or knotting um overestimate y'all it's trust me it's heather's told you the story about the three millimeter four foot long green five, five, five foot long green sapphire necklace don't don't be like don't be like Heather be be like you and overestimate vastly overestimate because I'm pretty sure Heather Heather in that situation did overestimate just not by enough because Heather is nothing if not prepared always So, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go until I've gotten to the point where this short cord here, and it's made over here, or to the point where I can't work with them anymore, and that's gonna have to be the end of my project. But this has been a really fun uh, just chatting and working stream. Uh, so when we actually do buttonless next week, I have several games that I brought in. So Heather and I will be playing a game and, and chit-chatting about a variety of topics. Or, okay, actually, okay, there's eight of you out there, vote! I want to vote! Next week, you have three choices. Well, two choices. Alright, you can have a dramatic reading, oh, okay, three choices. Dramatic reading of the Little Golden Book version of Jurassic Park. Dramatic reading of the Little Golden Book My Kitten, which I do need to show you the cover of. Or Heather and I will play a game. What would you prefer? Don't answer until you see the cover of My Kitten. So, this is the cover of um, My Kitten, which I do have the original copy of. So, uh, so dramatic reading of Jurassic Park Little Golden Book, which I do have also to show you. Dramatic reading, I threw everything on the floor. Dramatic reading of, okay, so Jurassic Park Little Golden Book. Dramatic reading of My Kitten, or Allison and Heather play a game which will probably involve some kind of trivia. <laughs> I know, Keiko, I was, I lost my shit 
Um, it was actually at World Market, and I bought every copy that they had, and I gave them to my entire book club, and I still have two extras, which... Ooh, could be prizes. Could be prizes. Well, one. I won't... No, I'm not giving up both of them, but one could be a prize. I mean, we could also play a game and, um... Well, we could also, um, we could hybridize. We could also play a game, though, and then, uh, the extra copy could be a prize. So, crap, I've, shite. Game. Hi, Kenneth! All right, so we actually have, um, all right, we got one vote for kitten and, uh, two votes for game at the moment, and I think I've officially lost it as far as this goes, so we're just going to finish this off. Now, go back until you get unlost. Right? Okay, go. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's a fun cheat for, for Kumihima. If you're trying to stretch it, you can literally stretch it. If you're just using a weight, chances are you probably haven't been doing it as tight as humanly possible, so you can stretch it out. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish this. Because I've gotten lost and I am uninterested in becoming unlost. I am very interested in going home. which I can't do until I do a bunch of other things around here. So, let's talk about how do we finish. We're going to take our bronze wire. We're going to cut another piece. Bronze wire, sterling wire, gold filled, whatever wire you're using. You're going to take your wire. You're going to cut another six inch or so piece. Longer is better than shorter. Okay, so we do have a couple of votes for... Uh, Combine dramatic reading and game, and then a book as a prize. Ooh, or we could, I could read My Kitten, and you could read Jurassic Park, or vice versa, and we could get points for whoever does the better dramatic reading. Oh, goodness. I don't have any, I don't know if I have any more little golden books, but I do have, um, the 10,000 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins, which is a, yes, I have that one, and I have other things, okay, dramatic reading, got it, so, six inch piece of wire, approximately, now, we're going to leave this one straight, and we're going to, oof, my allergies are starting to kick my butt. So yes, we are definitely going to um, competitive dramatic reading. All right, I love it. And these earrings, Pam, are for sale, by the way. They are, I made, I just threw them together at some point um, a couple months ago because I really wanted some just neutral earrings. So they are two beautiful Labradorite drops and like this one you, it has all the colors in it it's got like pink and red and blue and then these are two sapphires and then two Tahitian pearls um, see see look look at all the colors look at them say hi um, I will say they're a little heavy so when we get to like the 12 hour mark of the workday, the, they're starting to weigh on me a bit, but other than that, they're totally fine. So yes, Labradorite, Sapphire, Tahitian Pearl, Gold Filled, they're for sale. The pair is 125. They are Sapphires, Keiko. See, this is the cool thing about my industry is you get to discover things like all Sapphires aren't blue. Yeah, love these. But they are for sale. If anybody wants them, I will give them up. I'll even put new ear wires on them for you. 
So these are new ear wires because I stole the ear wires off of these earrings yesterday for another pair of earrings. So let's finish this bracelet. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take that piece of wire that we just cut and we're gonna lay it across our Kumihimo disc and then we are going to release all of our, um, actually not all of our, we're gonna release four of our cords from our Kumihimo disc. And we're gonna tie those two sets of cords in a knot. And we're gonna trap this piece of wire in the knot. That's the Kraken, right? Seriously. Okay, I have to say, uh, oh right, so hold on, sorry, Ke this is Keiko's fault, not mine. Um, it's all Keiko's fault, but okay, so when I went to see Oppenheimer, there were trailers for the new Meg movie, Meg being short for Megalodon, and it's like, you know, Jaws for the new millennia, but it looks like it also has a giant squid in it and I just it's just so over the top that I actually want to see it I want to see the giant shark and the giant kraken like murder everybody yeah. and and I'm sorry like judge me if you want to I don't care I am here for your judgment I also want to see the new Expendables movie because they have obviously ceased taking themselves even a little bit seriously, which once again is actually my favorite action genre. Like my favorite action genre is the is the we don't take ourselves like this is ridiculous and we know it and we're just gonna blow things up and be ridiculous and I'm sorry, but that's that's where my like action sweet spot lives. So Again, judge me if you want. It's all good. Wait, what? Hold on, now I'm. It, Ke, what? Huh? Keiko got way more intellectual than me. I was talking about big sharks and big squid. And she's talking about manifest destiny. Oh, the pre. I don't know. In the. It's unclear in the trail. Whaler. Whaler. It's unclear in the trailer whether the, the, the squid and the shark are going to battle, but I know there's a squid and there's a giant shark. Um, I could do this. Oh. I could do this and Megalodon are going to have it out and they're going to see who gets more likes on Grindr. Um, I know that's not a thing. I'm definitely losing it. So, let's finish this project. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'll probably wait till it comes to streaming, but I, I want to see the Big Shark movie. <laughs> I want to see the Big Shark movie, and I want to see the Sylvester Stallone not taking himself seriously movie. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't really want to pay for either of those movies. So, uh, I've tied those and I'm going to grab the other two and I'm going to tie those. I'm going to take those two and I'm going to tie them together. <laughs> uh, and like really pull them tightly because we're going to glue this and cut this and we really want, you know, this to stay. Okay, so my weight can go away. Don't pull your wire out from here. <laughs> manifest. I still like the idea of manifest destiny and the, you know, Archituthis Megalodon manifest destiny. Like, I, I feel like there, I feel like there's a different movie in there, but that would also be good. What do you think, Heather? Yeah. Heather agrees. So did you figure out the numbers? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna finish this. It's definitely losing focus. So, 
we are going to leave to find out we still get to get change. Yes, because I could not handle walking back outside after walking from the church. And things and stuff. Okay. I don't have any glue. You are me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and glue this, and we don't have to glue the first side because this is actually completely a finish end, so we're just going to glue everything that we just tied, and we're going to just kind of blob that up because we want to make sure that this stays, and this um, satin is pretty slippery, so just make sure you kind of grab all the edges and such with the glue. And typically your glue takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry. We are going to go ahead and just finish this now because y'all have already listened to me talk a lot on this broadcast. So we're going to trim all of this short, not the wires, just the threads for the course. So we want to make sure that we grab these and we just want to trim them down. that they are nice and close and you may want to because I'm looking at this and I see very clearly that I have and you may not see it on the camera but I can see it with my naked eye I see very cl clearly that I've glued there but I haven't really glued on this side so I'm just going to go ahead and take my glue go back in and uh, make sure I have secured all of that And then we're going to do the same with the lighter cords. This is where actually, if your glue is kind of blobbing, this is actually a, one of the few situations in which it's helpful. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing with the lighter cords. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I feel like Megalodon versus Architeuthis would kind of be like Godzilla versus Mothra. It's the same kind of apocalyptic kind sort of fantasy apocalyptic. ahead and finish this baby up. So I've got my, my wire here. I'm just going to bend it into a triangle so that it is kind of holding all of my cords and I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and bring the long one up straight and then I'm going to take the short one and wrap it around the long one. No, there's Godzilla versus Kong, but I think there's also, it, is it Godzilla versus Mothra, or Godzilla and Mothra are like buddies? Well, Godzilla's fought everybody. That's fair, okay. Godzilla. Okay, so what I'm going to do here on my is I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap it around my cords 
just to make sure that everything is nice and tight together. And then I'm going to pick up the wire cutter that I just dropped. And then I'm going to take my phone. I have never seen a single Godzilla movie, so Heather is definitely winning on that front. I am in touch because they're all fun. Well, you're winning on a lot of fronts, so, you know. Just a big winner. You are. Yep. That's it's what everybody true. says. That's what I say. Well, thank you. Like people say, sexy panty governor, but what are you going to do? Boom. I say proven winner. Yay. wire cutters want the best tools for cutting the cord. But heavy size because I'm just getting tired, y'all. It's been a long week already and it's only the second day. Uh, well no, for me, it's the third day of it. Mr. Crow. Count the mom <laughs> well, time. That's only one of my game rooms, though. If you count the mom time, it's the... It's the 40th day of work. Oh, isn't that when the flood's supposed to end? Yeah. I know, I'm almost done. I'm actually, I think y'all, I'm going to show you on this side and then I might piece out. Um, I might just do the other side whilst y'all talk amongst yourselves. So, I'm going to secure this side with the, <gasps> thank you Keiko, you're awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take and secure this side to the ends of the cords and then I'm going to take my cap and I'm going to drop it over that and so the idea is I want to be able to yank it down over my finish and my wire so that it hides everything and that's not always the easiest thing to do so I'm just going to do that off camera so that if I well, you don't see me. Oh, Keiko, okay, the grocery store is, it can be difficult. It really can. Oh. Grocery delivery, I'm going to say, was my favorite during the pandemic and still occasionally is. I cannot always with the people and the grocery store and the everything. Okay, so so once you've got your cap or cone over all your wire wraps and your end, we're going to go ahead and do a basic wrap to attach our clasp. So I'm going to use one of my bronze acid clasps and we are going to... Ah! Oh! Okay. So, mm. all right. I'm going to narrate how to do a basic wire wrap while also talking about the fact that my boyfriend goes through like an entire 64 ounce bottle of ketchup in a week. What? So yes, I'm actually in the same situation, Lori. I literally just got, okay, so away, rotate, back up over the top, rotate underneath. No, he just puts it on everything. 
Hi, Julie. Um, and then you're going to put your clasp on there. But I... It, 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 no, Keiko. But I literally just got a Costco membership for Diet Coke and ketchup. Because I'm going broke with Diet Coke and ketchup expenses. Which is... I don't even know. Um, I do use it, Lori, like you do, though. Um, so we're going to hold across that and then we're going to wrap. So I use it for barbecue sauce and, and other things, but... I, yeah, but... He, he, you, I have no words. I know, but ketchup is Midwestern, and he is not even Midwestern. He uses more ketchup than I do. It's ridiculous. But anyway. Yeah! Okay. So, I wrap down, and that is that. <sighs> and now I'm tired, and I still have to vacuum. So, thank y'all for hanging out with us during this combination. Tutorial and talking stream. So, <laughs> uh, it's, it's still Lee, Julie. Um, we, we've gone from, um, locking my cats out unintentionally to, uh, consuming a quart of ketchup per week. And, you know, it's been a hot minute since I lived with somebody. And let me tell ya, interesting readapting but hey there's your kumihimo pendant cord there's your ending that's the good ending we're not this ending we do not speak of this is the this is the you know drunken uncle that comes to thanksgiving that you just like put out on the on the deck and you're like we don't know him he's just some random dude who showed up uh but yeah so oh Yes. Julie. Ha, oh, so tempting. But take a hammer to that end. No, what really needs to happen actually is this this end is completely salvageable, but not in the time of this that's cause I am stealthy, Keiko. But I don't know that you ended it the way I typically do. Well it might have been well, what I didn't do is I didn't let the glue dry, so mm. Mm, that's why this end is gooped. Let the glue dry. You can end it the same way as this, and Heather will bless you for all of your days. But here we go. So that's our that's our pendant cord for this evening. Thank you all so much. Again, for hanging out during the pendant cord and talking stream, I am going to vacuum, go home, take a nap, and I will be back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream tomorrow thursday night at 6 30 with what a sale yes we are going to be doing a sale so tomorrow night 6 30 sale time there's going to be cool stuff for now i'm going to go rest up and we'll see you all then so everyone have a great night and we'll see y'all tomorrow twitch.tv forward slash beating dream it's okay, Julie. I was late too. You were you were later, but I was late. But sale tomorrow, six thirty. We'll see y'all then. Okay, bye. I uh, oh crap! I don't have any preset. Yeah, buy screens on this. Okay, bye y'all. Just it's ending. How do I leave? I I don't know how I leave, but I'm leaving now. Bye. <laughs>